first, thank you for coming out uh, tonight on a Thursday. I know we have some meetings uh, on the east side um, that is happening as well with city staff. And so I first want to always tell you it's an honor and a privilege to have the opportunity to serve you as your council representative. I don't take it lightly. I don't take it for granted. Uh, also, we have our assistant chief here uh, as well representing um, our city manager. And we also have some ACMs that are here. So thank you for being here. Um, the Black Chamber is here. And so take opportunities to thank you for allowing me to represent you. And I believe that if we're going to get work done, we have forums like this so we can engage on a, a different setting where you're not having to come down to City Hall, we're coming to the community, and we talk to you about what we're doing at the city and how we can improve. We always can improve. And so that's what these meetings are for. And so uh, here you probably have already seen this information, but I'm your council representative for District 8. Uh, I am a Texas Westland board member, a Trinity Metro board member. I was just uh, in Kansas City talking about transit. Uh, we got a lot of great things we really want to do to get people moving in the city of Fort Worth. Um, and you see all of those. All right, here's what we've been doing. So got elected in 2021, 2022, 2023. Each year, this is our third year having our uh, forum here. And so one of the things that's very impactful is how we get people moving in Fort Worth, how we get uh, rooftops. We talk a lot about uh, grocery stores. We talk about, a lot about restaurants. We talk about healthy fooding healthy eating. One of the most components to make that happen is rooftops. And so here in 2023, we have continued our, our effort to build, to bring in affordability as well as homes inside of District 8. We know for several years that development had really stopped in District 8. And so it was very important for me and my office to make sure we kick that development going. So we have 336 rooftops close to downtown Fort Worth, Overland Properties, 94 rooftops in Riverside, Generated Housing Partners, 96 in Crowley Road. Housing Channel is gonna bring 248 rooftops behind Renaissance in Renaissance Square. Uh, Columbia Renaissance also bringing 100 rooftops. I'm going the wrong way. All right, economic development, job creation. Uh, if we can't get people to jobs, the next big thing we can do is bring jobs to people. And so while we're working on transit, trying to get people from South Fort Worth all the way to Alliance or get uh, Rolling Hills to South Fort Worth, we are trying to bring jobs and bring them inside of District 8. And so we was able to generate in this last cycle jobs that's going to be bringing here 787 new jobs, drink pack, uh, Siemens, and new coal. Drink Pack is a $232 million investment, 450 full-time employees, annual salaries at $70,000. I will tell you, every time I talk to people who want to bring jobs to the city of Fort Worth, the number one thing I tell them, I appreciate everybody having the opportunity all over the city of Fort Worth, but when you hire people and when you bring people in these jobs, $70,000, I need them to have zip codes. They live inside of District 8, 76104, 76105, 76112, 76140. I make that a priority. It's because you can bring the jobs to our neighborhood, but if we don't get the jobs, then we still stay in poverty. And so Siemens is a $125 million investment, 167 full-time employees at an annual salary of $63,000. Um, they also have a plant in Grand Perry. Uh, with a union, and I met with the union reps today. We want to make sure that we can try to unionize this uh, project here as well, but we can only do so much in representation. New code, $300,000 uh, investment, 85 full-time employees with an annual salary of $80,000. Uh, we, I really appreciate uh, Robert Stearns is also here who does our economic, uh, he's over our economic department, and so this is not Chris Nettles going out and making all this happen. This is our economic team that's making things happen. They do come to me, ask for approval. We work with city council. We work with our, mayor, uh, our mayor's office and our management's office to make sure that it meets the qualifications for the city of Fort Worth. So this is a team effort. This is me showing you what we are doing for the residents of District 8 and the city of Fort Worth. Um, community development, permanent supportive housing. We talk a lot about how um, affordability 
is at a low level for the city of Fort Worth and really all over uh, the, the nation is that we can't find enough housing to deal with our homeless population. We have a serious homeless issue. Now, we will say that it, it has been decreasing, but the more it decreases, the more homeless people we get. And so the best next thing we can do is do permanent supportive housing. And so this has been an effort of our council, an effort of the city, uh, city council. And so we have Journey Homes with 72 units, Columbia Renaissance, uh, Columbia uh, Residential with 25 units, and Overland Property Group with eight units to help support people who are homeless to give them permanent supportive housing. We have worked with Tara uh, and other groups to make sure that takes place. Community development also, so with, this is part of the Journey Homes off of Crowley Road, 18 duplexes serving 72 individuals. This is kind of a project, if I'm not mistaken, kind of like the one we did in District 2 uh, that has been successful where they have services on site to deal with our homeless population. Columbia Renaissance uh, Residential continue to do the investment there. Riverside, same thing. All right, 36 deeply affordable units. Here recently, uh, I'm really excited about this. This is a vote that just took place uh, with Justin's Place. It's a, a, a great story. Um, uh, single, single mothers and children having the opportunity to prevent them from going into homeless. So one, you have preventable housing, which is this, and then you have permanent supportive housing, which is the one we just talked about. All of these, you have affordable housing. All of these takes place or helps our community. And so Justin's Place is gonna do some units. We were able to give them $1.5 million to support their initiative. They also received money from Tarrant County to make sure this comes online. And this is the project that they're going to be bringing. And when I say project, I'm not talking about like projects, but this is the project that they're going to be proposing as Justin's Place. Uh, we broke ground on a partnership with Center for Transforming Lives to bring the headquarters to District 8. This building will include small business incubator, finance and coaching, um, counseling, housing programs. This is something we talked about last year. Uh, is the old Montgomery Wards building. Uh, this is one of the votes that I stand on and being proud of, of when we first got in office that was going to turn the old Montgomery Wars into um, a U-Haul uh, storage. And I was like, I don't think that's the high most best use for that area. And so we, we sat on it and we had Transform Lives come and say, we want to take over and make this. This building, and I don't know, has not been in operator for 10 plus years. And I believe it's much longer. So this is going to be a great investment for uh, District 8, for the areas surrounding Morningside, Rolling Hills, um, Southside area, bringing development back to the district so that we can take care of our roads, streets, and lights, and et cetera. Uh, just right across the street, the Boys and Girls Club uh, opened up a brand new uh, door kitchen. Uh, I mean, it's the top of the uh, line. They are able to feed more children now, 3,500 3, meals a day for our, our young people who need meals. When we, de when we talk about poverty, we talk about parents who are working day jobs, working night jobs, and they're not able to feed their children because they're not at home. And so pe programs like this that provide supper meals helps our families, helps our mothers, helps our fathers to raise our children. And so we're excited about the Boys and Girls Club uh, breaking that new kitchen in. We was able to goodwill North Texas um, generate with Mark Vesey, and I know we had a representative with Mark Vesey's office here, and hopefully once we get to questions, uh, if you have questions, I'd be happy to answer, or we'll send them to Congressman Mark Vesey, who's down in Washington fighting for us. Community concerns, we have been having some issues with uh, in our historical South Side area, and I really appreciate Assistant Chief, uh, Assistant Chief Julia Swerngen, who's not here, and the Chief of Police. We had some concerns with our, um, with a grocery, well, not a grocery store, it's a convenience store with a lot of foot traffic. And so we was able to uh, get a sky tower there to try to uh, mitigate some of those issues. 
Civilian Oversight Board, we, uh, we talked about that. We, we pushed that last year. It didn't pass. We got a lot of information to try to fix that and get it here. We're excited to announce that we have a new officer uh, police monitor now, which is Moncia. She's also here, so if you have any questions for her, uh, we'd be happy to answer those. But we look forward to having a conversation with her for the community so we can talk about how we're going to deal with our oversight, with our oversight monitor's office, and how it is completely separate from the city of Fort Worth. Those are some of our concerns. Yes, they are hired within the city of Fort Worth, but the office operates independently to make sure that we have oversight when it comes to uh, our police officers. So what do we do in the 2024 budget? I'm not going to go through all the budget. We had several, David, I don't know how many budget means that we have, at least 10, 12 uh, in the community, at City Hall, around the city of Fort Worth. And so I hope you pay, uh, uh, took part in the process of the budget. But a couple things we want to highlight uh, that we're excited and proud of, that we was able to uh, implement 106 new police officers compared to last year's 73. Our, uh, our Fort Police Department Hope Team getting four new officers and our firefighters, we're increasing those to 76 new staff. This council mayor and has been very vocal on public safety and making sure you're safe in your homes, make sure if there's fires, making sure what's ever happened that we're gonna support public safety. And so we're proud that we're continuing to do that in this budget and we'll continue to do that as long as we're in office. Uh, let's see. Uh, MWBE contracts. These are some of the things that I had some interest in because I know that when we, when I got elected, there were some issues with minority getting contracts and not so much an uh, issue on the city, but sometimes if we're not focused or we're not intentional, then we miss out on opportunities. So if you know people who are contractors or are working, we have been increasing that number uh, greatly. So from the fiscal year of 2020, we had at 0.67, now we're up to 0.58 by the end of 2022, and there are some numbers that are still going to be coming in. So when it comes to uh, projects, um, contracts with the city of Fort Worth, we want to make sure that our black and brown communities, uh, contractors are getting support and getting funds through the city. And so this is our contact, um, your representatives, my email up there, Sally Masson is here. And then District 8 goes to all of our, uh, our staff. So um, if you have any questions or concerns, we ask you to email us and also call us. Our goal is to be vitally uh, accessible to District 8. So if you calling and you're not getting a return call, please email. Uh, please loop me up. If you send it to District 8, I get it and my entire staff gets it. And so that's the best place to send it to make sure everybody's getting the email. Uh, and some call, hit me up on Messenger and all those kind of things. This is the best way to contact us here. And so at this time, those are the things that we've been doing. And I wanted to uh, let the city and let District 8 know that we're working for you every single day. Uh, you might not see a post on Facebook. You might not see a news article. But these are the things that we're doing every year. Um, this is our town hall that we're doing today. We do this every year around October, but we're gonna do another one around the springtime because we wanna be focused. We wanna engage our community. And so we have a lot of representatives that are here today that can talk and answer your questions. So at this time, I think I'm gonna open it up to questions. Is that right? Yes, I'm getting a head shake. Okay, so whatever your burning questions is, uh, we got a Hallmark representative here. Uh, we're gonna ask, Sure. What are, uh, one of the slides, what are you suggesting or recommending of improvement of the OPOM office? What are, what are your suggestions? Because our neighborhood had a speaker come from there, but we'd be interested in hearing, or I would be interested in hearing, how you think it can improve. Okay. So, I, and we also have the uh, Von Seer here, so I want her to answer that as well. Um, anything and all things can improve. One of the things we, we did know while I'm giving her time to come up uh, is when we had our, um, when we went and looked at all our policies, it, a lot, we have policies in place, sometimes they're not just followed. The other caveat to that is that these policies need to be updated. These policies have been imp implemented years ago, and Fort Worth is not the same. And so I'm going to give an opportunity to answer your question and be more. Well, good evening. 
Let's welcome around the full world, y'all. I've been here at Grand Total six weeks, so I've been busy. I'm very excited, and we do have plans. So right now, my immediate thoughts are our office is small, and we need to grow, and I need to make sure that I have experts in the office to do the work that we're required to do. But I spent the last month probably doing meet and greets. So anyone who's been involved in race and culture task force, any community members I can get in contact with, I've been having lunches and coffees. And what I learned is a lot of people didn't know the work we were actually doing. So a lot of people didn't know you could actually come to our office and file an internal complaint. And that would be investigated. A lot of people didn't know we monitor critical incidents and use of force. So right now, the big thing that our office can do is educate the community of the resource you have in Oklahoma. So internally, we're going to be reviewing policies, making recommendations. I've already met with the chief, all those things. But what I need is make sure that I have an informed and educated public. So when you see something, you know that you can come to our office and actually say something. Any other questions for me while I'm standing here? All right. Well, I look forward to working with everyone. Yes, sir. I can. I'll bring you a card. Most of us understand that you can't run district by yourself. Mm -hmm. So in terms of boards and commission, who have you appointed to what boards and commission and what boards and commission appointments are coming up and who are you thinking about? Okay. And while I'm coming up with that, Sal, if you have any uh, thoughts on that, let me know. Um, one of the things we did do, because I believe that it was important that we just then completely demolish what we had in place. And so um, my predecessor had elected and selected a lot of board members. Most of those board members we kept on to make sure it was a smooth transition. Uh, we have board members that are here tonight that represents on our parks. Um, and I, we have an ex uh, board member that works in on our residential boards and adjustments. And so uh, I can get you the list of each names. I think we have a total of 10, 11 uh, board we recently have brought Tisa Leggett on to represent on our zoning commission. Um, and I don't think we have any new ones within the last year. But I can actually provide that list of each name and representative for the boards. And we don't have any vacancies at the moment. Will you be able to make an appointment to the civil service board? I think that's the uh, mayor's appointment. Uh, but I can always make a recommendation. If you're interested in serving, if you will send me an email, I will forward that over as a recommendation. Um, and I think it's important that, I don't know, we can figure out where the, those lists at so they can go onto the website. I don't know if, if anybody here can help us with that. But there, there's an opportunity where you can go on and you can actually apply for each of these boards. And then it is sent out to all of the council uh, for recommendations. Johnny, you got a question? Yeah, my question uh, deals with transportation. All the jobs that, that you mentioned, uh, they usually come in with all the all the all the top all the top paying jobs. All when they, when, they, when they come in there, they already got them paid. Okay, now and the other thing is transportation to these to these job sites. They're full of facts of, of you know we don't have a good transportation system. So how do you how do you propose? Is is there someone work with? I looked at the transportation. There's no way somebody living in District 8, or it's difficult to get to those job sites to apply for those jobs. And second thing, how are you dealing with a lot of people who are coming in out of who are, who are ex-offenders who are also looking for jobs and trying to, is there anyone working on that problem? So we actually Transportation mm -hmm. and ex-offenders, and also that we also talk about education, the full uh, ride state and partnership with them. So when these kids get out of school, they are already there, but they can, they can move into them. Okay. So it's about five things yeah, that you just talked about. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking about oh, this. So. I don't get up at 3 o'clock in the morning, but I <laughs> So uh, we talk about transportation you, to actually get people. So you talk like a bus system uh, to get people to the, the thing about it is that we have a bus system. I sit on Trinity Metro Board now. And the stigma of riding the bus is so low. People think if they ride the bus, 
that they are in poverty or broke or whatever it is, and people just don't ride the bus. And so what, what Trinity Metro has done is they have given service to where the ridership is the greatest. And so if you're on Lancaster, you having buses come up and down Lancaster every 10 minutes on the stops because that's where the most riders are. Now, there are more stops that we can create, but that's at the Trinity Metro um, boards and commissions. And so I'd be happy to introduce you to people who create those stops, uh, last stop mile, and uh, sit with you and see how we can increase that for these jobs. Because you are correct that if you're in East Fort Worth and, and, and uh, Southside, it's going to be hard for you to get to uh, Everman Parkway and uh, Oak Grove. It's several buses you have to catch to get there. So uh, that's not necessarily a city of Fort Worth issue, but it is an issue for Fort Worth because we got to make sure we get people around. Uh, I think you mentioned, um, what was you, you, so we work with um, first, what is it called, Sally? First Stop Reentry, first stop reentry uh, which uh, offers out of Circle Drive. Uh, we actually did a job uh, recruiting, uh, recruiting for ex-offenders. Uh, we did one for with United Black Contractors just last month trying to get people lined up with jobs. They actually have another one that's coming up in November. I'll get that to you. That's coming up in November um, for ex-offenders. And so there is opportunities out there. We'll put that on our social media, our website. And while I'm talking about that, if you have not um, registered to receive mail or email from the city of Fort Worth, we, you need to do that uh, immediately. What you can do when you go on there to register, you can register for city news and you can register for District 8 news and each district. And so every time we are doing something as a community, it goes and it's automatically sent to you. So like today we sent out, I think 12,000 emails, 12,000 emails to people to tell them about tonight. Since so yesterday we sent it tonight. And so if you're on that email blast, if you need to update, you can get information like that. Evans Avenue, what about it? So what's the, what's the, where Evans and Rosedale? Rosedale? Okay. So Evans and Rosedale is one of the projects that we have been excited about uh, for a while to come online. And I will tell you, uh, David would tell you that this is something that they've been working on way long before my tenure. One of the things that's taking place is with uh, Hope Global, I don't think they're here tonight, um, they have requested uh, an extension through January and February to finalize the deal of the purchase of the land to and the mayor and I met with them along with staff and we agreed to give them that extension to finish the work that they're doing so that's where we are it's, it's upon them to finalize work with DJ Harrell which is in our uh, development service to get permitting and plans finalized and done now, I know you had the question about changing plans. They're not changing. They can't change anything. We already approved what we're going to approve, but they have to actually submit those plans to the city of Fort Worth for uh, final approval for them to move forward. So before they change plans, like uh, producing a bunch of high rides to it looks like they can't change that part. They can't change it. No, we won't. We won't approve. So what well, we have. So think of it this way. They have to actually submit for permitting. We have, as a community, you guys have already said what you wanted. And they have sent you, I think they have showed you the renderings. Those renderings are the same. They're not, if they, have, if they change those renderings, they have to come back to the community. So it's not going to go up six or down one. It's going to stay the, the exact same as you were shown the last time in your meetings. But they have to submit to the city for work to actually get a, a official permit in order to do the work. So they haven't even done that yet. Can y'all talk later? <laughs> Go to his office. No. Okay. Got a question in the back. <laughs> okay, I have two questions. Sure. The annual income that you show for those jobs, are they medium 
minimum, average, what does that represent, you know? It's the average income. So, say if it's, if it's 100 jobs, average out of 100, they're going to be making that amount. Gotcha. My second question <clears throat> is, are you aware of the homeless problem on Evans between Jefferson and Richmond on the west side of the street? It's a big, big building that used to be a store, I think. But there are homeless people that are encamped there in the front and in the back of that facility. Were you guys, was anybody aware of that? Code, are we aware of that, uh, that part? Um, so code, code and the police department, the HOPE team, we work, you know, Code does the cleanup, HOPE team does the outreach. Uh, I know we've been out there a couple of times. I don't know what the current status is, but at the end of the meeting, come see me and I'll get you, I'll work on an update right now for you. And, I, and I, one of the things that we do have is the uh, My Fort Worth app, and it allows you to actually take a picture and report an address right at that moment, and it automatically sent to the appropriate departments to start getting that fixed. And so I encourage everyone to do that. And then you also can take the snap picture, email my office. Um, it's, it's something that's done automatically. Once we get that, and what, what we have done in the process, just to kind of give you some context, when we, I see your hand, David. When we have done that, um, a Sally or anyone in my office, we will start working on getting a solution. And we will respond to you back once we have received the solution. So sometimes what we will do is say, thank you for your email. We're working on it. We'll get back with you on the solution. And we're working offhand in order to make that happen for you. Okay. David. Yes, um, over in Carter Park, we have a, a situation where we keep on reporting uh, on the app uh, the homeless camps that are being built and they get rebuilt, um, but they just move away to a different spot. Uh, I remember before the pandemic, we used to have code enforcement that would ride around and look at uh, things that were violations. Are we going to, could we have those patrols again and, uh, and also like focusing on the uh, homeless camps in Carter Park in District 8? right there along where the, where the railroad tracks are at or, or and toward the back where the park is at, at the dead end and also, uh, I guess the south of Seminary. Those are the parks right there. That's where a lot of them camp out at. And then we do move them. The, the city uh, the code enforcement does clean those areas up, but it's, uh, they move to a different location. But I, all I was concerned about, maybe we could get uh, patrols again like we did before the pandemic um, or if there's, Something that we should, I should be doing uh, as a neighborhood association to get that going or something. So, <clears throat> and for those who don't know me, I'm Brandon Bennett. I'm your code compliance director. That um, I've been with the city about 20 years now, and I'll tell you, we've never had enough code or police officers to proactively, right, address all the different crimes that happen in your neighborhoods. And so, one of the things that we have, a tool that we have now that we didn't have in the past, is the smartphone app where you can be our eyes and ears, because you're absolutely right. What happens is that where the homeless problem used to be singularly located on Lancaster, I will tell you there isn't a neighborhood in Fort Worth that isn't experiencing camps. That anywhere there's a nook, cranny, you know, anything, any, any type of growth of trees and stuff, we got the homeless because they, they, they realize that they can, they can panhandle in this neighborhood or that neighborhood, right? Uh, on different intersections and, and, and raise money. So we, we have it throughout the city. Use that app to be our eyes and ears. That will get you the quickest response on homeless camps. Because what happens is when you put it in there, there's a work order that goes to the police and code compliance at the same time. So when the officers come in in the morning or if they're on duty uh, when you send it, that that's one of the things that, that, that they get a work order for right away. That is the, that is the fastest, cleanest way to do it. In, in your particular, in your neck of because I am familiar with, with, with yeah. your neighborhood. You've been right? to that. Yeah, I've been to your neighborhood meetings. No complaints, been to, no right? complaints. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will tell you, it's just a matter of, of, it's a sequence issue, right, where they can only get to so many things in a day, and sometimes it takes them an extra day or two to get to things, and that's where it helps. I will tell you, when you use that app, it prioritizes code compliance. We're going to address those things that come in to us from all of you before we address other things that, that the officer may, 
come across in a day. Is there like, was that like a Code Rangers or something? And we like do have a Code Ranger program. Uh, it, it, I'll tell you, it's primarily made up of people that also do the Code Blue with the police department. So both uh, police and code have citizen volunteers uh, that can help uh, keep the neighborhood safe for the police department. Uh, they do a crime prevention function where they report suspicious activity and, and look for hazards and things like that. Uh, at the same time, if there's a code violation, that they can help us, and the way they do it is, is a notice goes out to a violator uh, from the code ranger, comes from the city, but the code ranger initiates it. That frees up a code enforcement officer to work on higher priority calls like um, the homeless camps and things like that. So at the end, uh, we'll see the code compliance table, and we can tell you how to get involved in that or uh, how to utilize the app and things like that. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you, I'm, I'm actually piggybacking off of you, but uh, I'm gonna piggyback too. Okay, go ahead. I can't wait. Hey, who wants to go first? So, I, I don't mind. Okay, I was gonna bring, I was gonna bring up the nuisance abatement uh, on the property over there. Um, now I know it's District 11 for the uh, motel, uh, what is Days Inn Motel, uh, but I, I've heard from other people from different neighborhoods. Uh, how does that? How do we get that thing started? How, how does a nuisance of baby get started? Like, if we have another property in, in Carter Park area uh, that we want to deal with, how would a neighborhood go about doing that? Uh, do we contact the council or do we contact? Yeah, you, yes, both. You you report it, and so and and what? And I don't know, Chief. You have something you want to add to? It? Okay. So whenever you want to report a nuisance abatement, we have MDOs throughout the city. I'm sorry, my name is Robert Aldridge. I'm the executive assistant chief in the police department. I would say connect with your uh, MPO. Let them know where the address is because there, there's a threshold uh, that we have to meet to make it a nuisance, nuisance abatement property. What, so what is there's, that threshold? Well, there's, I'm sorry. There, there are so many offenses uh, that are violent crimes, uh, repeated drug offenses, and there's reports that we need to make or the citizens need to make that, that needs to be on file before we can start the nuisance abatement process. So what I would encourage you is if there is a pro problem property, just contact us. Through the MPO program, if you don't get your MPO, let me know. Um, but it takes the first step of just let, identifying where the property is, and then we can tell you what the needs are for us to go forward with that. So does that be like violent crimes? Or violent crime is definitely crime? one of them, uh, drug usage. Um, so part of it is, is that that property owner allows this activity to happen. So they don't have any preventative measures that prevent that stuff from happening. Like if you know, he knows that they're selling drugs out of the parking lot or they're, they're selling drugs from within the, the business itself and he does nothing to prevent it, well, that would fall into a nuisance abatement category. So, and it's no different for things that are going out on outside of this uh, parking lot. Thank you. You bet. Kenny, you had a question. <clears throat> yeah, um, my name is Kenny Mosley. I'm the executive director for Renaissance Heights Foundation um, that's leading the uh, development there in Renaissance Square. Um, and really piggybacking off of, well, back it up a little bit. So what we do, we work actually alongside um, a lot of the neighborhood associations uh, in our work to make sure that we're bringing along that revitalization um, in the way that the community wants to see that happen. Um, and in those community neighborhood association meetings that I'm a part of, um, I, I'm listening to the code team coming and talking about um, how they're addressing some of the pain points of the community. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to um, kind of ask or discover if it was possible uh, from a reporting, like a report back. So when the neighborhood associations, when the residents, the neighbors are reporting um, cases, right, um, if it's Cop Park or somewhere else, homelessness or, when, or wherever, is it possible to have a report? So that the app, right, that you're referring to, um, once that is entered, um, can your team bring back to the neighborhood associations, right, here are, here's a report of all of the uh, cases or incidents that you reported, right? Mm -hmm. And here's how it was addressed, or is it still in progress? Has it been closed? Mm -hmm. So that way, the the community can see uh, exactly how you know your team is is executing, or what those the gaps still are, um, and what they need to do, <coughs> right, as a community uh, to be supportive and working in collaboration with with code. Yeah, the the answer is absolutely yes. So one of the cool things about Fort Worth is that the Neighborhood police officers and the code enforcement officers work the same patrol beats. And we do this because there's a correlation between crime and grime. So just like an MPO would bring to a neighborhood meeting, here's the crime statistics for the area, we can work on getting the code officers to bring you uh, updates on the code cases. Uh, we just implemented a new 
uh, software application, right? So that's been probably part of the reason why that, that, that the old system uh, was not as robust as the new system, so that may have led to some of this. And then also, for, for those people, you don't necessarily have to wait for that meeting, that the city has a tool uh, off the, web, the main web page, and it's one address. And if you type in the address of the violation, it'll not only tell you uh, what the code activity has been there in the past, you know, what's current, it'll tell you past uh, crimes that were in the area, it will tell you past building permits, I mean, there's all kinds of information on addresses there that you can use. But absolutely, come see us afterwards. Um, I'm all for that. The cool thing about the app is, when you use it, is you can still do it somewhat anonymously, and then when you make the complaint on your phone, you can track it back easily. I'll tell you, for code compliance, if you leave contact information, an email address, a name and a phone number, something like that, um, 99 times out of 100, uh, my staff will, will call you back and give you updates at different milestones. Uh, and if you happen to be unlucky and have that one time out of 100 where we don't, you can call me personally and I'll fix that. Because I think it's important to bring feedback to you. you when you bring us something that's important to you, we should be reaching back to you and saying this is what we did with it. So I'm, I'm with you on that. That's great. That's great. Yeah, closing the feedback loop is, yeah. is I think, what's really key there. Andre McEwen. Just to piggyback, Andre McEwen, Citizen Fort Worth. Brandon, thank you to your team. A uh, couple things along, as down Evans Street, that was stated already, 2200 Evans Street uh, seems to be a location of, of severe homelessness. Uh, so just want to put that, that's the former Brooks Pharmacy. So want to put that on the radar continually. And unfortunately, 2401 Scott Avenue, uh, unfortunate death of a homeless person a couple weeks ago. And so the concern is making sure the brush to find a solution to help support the code, code, code enforcement team. Know you understand, get that. However, where there's a lot of brush, that's where encampments are. So Beach and I-30, I think text out that somebody came and cleared the brush. So homeless was reduced. So where there's the opportunity to clear brush, because that's where homeless encampments are. Secondly, what, how can, how can let property owners post no trespassing, so that becomes more of an urgency to come out versus not posting that if you homo, if the if the property owner post says no trespassing, can that help support your team, Brandon, to make sure that that's if somebody reads it, if a homeless person, anybody, that they know that there will be a fine. So just want to ask, how do we help you? Because the challenge of development that council is trying to do, homelessness creates a a barrier, an impediment to create good development because we're having challenges in places that have been there for a long time, like 2200 Evans Avenue. So how do we help you? So I, and I, I wholeheartedly agree with, with what, what Andre said, that um, we know that having homeless camps, it impacts um, your safety, um, your quality of life, um, development. We, there's no argument to that. So we do a, we do a number of things. One is, that if it's city property or city right away or state, like uh, what we did with the state, uh, and we have repetitive camps, uh, we'll actually go in. Uh, we'll work with the parks department. Um, if, if they're trees, we'll work with community service workers. If it's brush, and we'll clean that out. We, we use crime prevention through environmental design. We borrow that from the police department because we know if we have natural surveillance or have good sight lines uh, where they can't hide, then they're less likely to come back, right? Um, uh, if it's on private property, right, we can't just enter onto a property and, and trim it. But one of the cool things we do in Fort Worth is we can work with private property owners because it's expensive for them to clean up camps, right? If they'll bring the stuff to the curb, right, we'll haul it off for free. And then if they'll trim up their brush, their brush and put it at the curb, we'll haul that off for free. And it's not really free because really at the end of the day, they're saving you, the taxpayer, money. Because if they clean up their property that way, we're not having to send police and fire and code back out over and over again on the camp. So it, 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 it's a complicated uh, process, step process, uh, but most certainly, you know, part of it is feedback to us to say, I reported this over and over and over again. I know that, that seems redundant. Remember, there's lots of different code officers and police officers, and sometimes it's different people that have responded to different complaints, and it doesn't always add up right away. So your feedback is important. Okay. We got a couple. Of, hold on, y'all. Uh, anyway, you got a question? 
to the sister of the police monitor, not to throw you under the train, but we're going to let you catch a bus. Fort Worth, Tarleton State just had its annual consent decree conference here in Fort Worth. Would you agree with the Justice Department that there is enough circumstantial and real evidence to warrant a justice investigation to the police department and possible place them on the consent decree? Great question. What I'll say is that I was in attendance for the consent decree conference and I'm coming to Fort Worth from New Orleans Police Department that is under a consent decree. Um, what I'll say at this time, for what I know, and I'm only going to speak on what I actually know at this point in time, I can't say that the Department of Justice would come in and impose a consent decree um, on Fort Worth Police Department. What I will say is my goal is, is to do the work that I'm permitted to do and allowed to do, and this community wants to see me to do, to hopefully prevent that from having to happen. Just to say that they are interested in coming in and doing a progressive investigation. Understood. So we got about a few more minutes uh, for questions, so we have an opportunity to um, allow you to meet with the vendors again before we leave out. Um, I've heard from some of my neighbors uh, about um, calling the calling the police and the re police response time being very slow. Uh, I also recently heard that the uh, police station on Bowl Street, which is South Division, was moving to Burleson. Uh, if, is that true, one? And two, what is that going to do to the response time? <laughs> Okay, um, the response times, let's talk about that first. The response times, every call that comes through the communication center is prioritized. So a life and death situation is priority one, you know, and it kind of goes down from there. Somebody being assaulted can be a priority one depending on the circumstances, and then you have lower level offenses. So depending on what was reported, and I don't know the specifics, I would have to figure out why it took so long for them to respond. So some of the other issues were in our communication center because we were having problems with staffing, but because of the council member, our city leadership, we've increased the staffing in our communication center to be able to take those calls a little bit more efficiently and effectively. So the, to answer, your, uh, we're moving to Burleson. Uh, no, we're not moving to Burleson, but, but we are moving down south. So oh, it, it is going to be on McPherson Road and McCart McPherson. <laughs> Um, because we had, it, South Division was divided into two, two divisions. So one was on Bolt Street, the other one was at 7451 McCart, which is literally a few blocks away from where the new subdivision is. So the whole hope was to get all the patrol officers in one division and in one building because it's easier whenever you have the collaboration between all the patrol officers instead of being split up. So to answer your question, is it going to impact the response times? No, because they're still going to be they're still going to be out in the community. They're still assigned to patrol beats, and so all they're changing is the location of where they report. They're not changing, you know, how they deploy and how they actually answer calls for service. Okay, on response times, um, I think it's been like uh, accidents when someone has an accident, they call the police, sure, and they it takes forever for them to show up. And a lot of that depends on the injuries, location, if it's blocking. I mean, there, there are a lot of factors that kind of go into that to how they prioritize those calls. But I mean, if there's one specific, I'd love to research it for you and, and get you the answer. Okay, thank you. I would love to have a um, police substation in our area. We're in Highland Hills area. There's some vacant buildings on the end. Is it possible, or how can we get a police substation? We see officers sitting doing their paperwork. We understand they're doing their paperwork or something. So how can we get a substation in our neighborhood? So I think what you're referring to is a storefront. Um, a subsection for a substation for us is an actual police headquarters facility, okay. like what you see over here at 1100 Nashville. Uh, but storefronts, basically, those are buildings or locations that the property owner donates to us, or we pay one dollar a year. And so the cost is almost nothing to the city, but yet they allow us to occupy those locations because they lack our police presence, or there's other reasons why they lack us on those properties. So really it's kind of connecting with those business owners to see if they would like that. Um, and then that way we can, we can determine if that's a good place for them to be. I believe Highland Hills is a good place to be. So, yeah. Thank you. Also, I would like to comment on the My Fort Worth app. It is a superb app. It is one of them. It's better than the code compliance officer. 
but it's, it's a great app. I always, <laughs> I always get the uh, response quickly, so I appreciate that. All right. One or two more. Anybody? You? Yes. yes. LaShonda, I, I got you next. I would like to know in my neighborhood, down the street from me is a home there, that mm -hmm. now each room is a apartment number. Is that acceptable here in the city of Fort Worth? No. So is is it uh, A5? Is is the home uh, zone as an A5 residential home? Or is it zone? I did not check the zoning of the home itself, but it's, in our it's on our street. Okay. It's so, a residential home. Single family home. So they can have apartment A, apartment B. It's going to be determined on what is zoned, is that correct? Yeah, like so if home. you come see us after yeah. the meeting today, um, and I'll tell you, for, for all of you, sometimes people sometimes people convert property unlawfully right um and you live in the neighborhood you know you know you know what's going on and so that's where we encourage you to, to call the code enforcement officer for your area yeah, like, wow. like tonight talk to tony hiller the one with the white hair and we also use the phone right, right and and let's look and see what's going on with the property for everybody to understand that when we deal with these type of uh, code violations that they don't generally get fixed overnight, that it's generally a process of law. In, in, in Texas, we are a very strong property rights state, uh, and we have to work through putting a case together, taking it to court, scheduling an appearance before court. There's all these things that we have to do. And so I would encourage you tonight to talk to Tony, and he can tell you where we are in that process. Okay. Absolutely, guys. We don't, we don't want, we, we don't want houses turned into to, to quasi boarding homes illegally. That's not what we want. We want you to, to help us be the eyes and ears for that. And you can email that address to us too, so we can stay uh, with code. Yes, sir. Okay, last. Uh, not not going to change the thing too much, but uh, my name is Johnny Lewis. I live in the historic South Side. And uh, one of the things we've been looking at, we have done, the, we've done the work, is is concerning bonds, the bond index and street repair. We've been, oh, I can show you streets that for 50 years we've been asking for them to be repaired. <laughs> we sent a list to you, we sent it, we sent it to the city attorney, and we want to know what and what do we need to do to find out if any of these streets are up for street repair. We, I mean, the same streets, the same potholes, the same things that need to be repaired. And Chris, it's just, it's, I mean, Councilman you knows, it's just getting, it's just getting really frustrating, not just to me. But for other people, when you talk about having new homes built, and we've got all these houses being built, but on the northern end of our community, it's, you know, you go through there, it's like, it's like riding through Beirut. <laughs> or uh, uh, Super Junior, sure. or Cadena Wells, I've, and I've been there. And so, we, we want, so that's, that's one of the things we've we, we had people ask about. What do we do about getting these streets on the south side of there? We've sent them, we've sent them a list of the streets, sure. we did the work. So the city can't say, well, we didn't know. And the other thing is on, on, the, on the lights. Uh, we said, we, we've done the work on the lights. We went out and did, and did the work on the lights. About them, they need to update those bulbs. They know it, but. When is the last time you've done the lights? Because we have started a new program. I can't okay, remember. You started you start a new program. When's the last time? Right. Okay, it's been about two, maybe three months ago. We go, we go through okay. another dead light stuff. And sure. also, the other, the other issue we brought up was the thing of forestry needs to go out and trim, trim, the, trim around those lights. Mm -hmm. Because the problem you've got is you got, you got police officers that won't even go down some of these streets. Mm -hmm. Because they say, no, I'm not, I'm not saying it for a joke, I'm just a mouse. Because That's it's true. dark down there. Hell, I don't even want to go down there, but I do. Let's answer those two questions for you. Um, I just wanted to say something real quick, Mr. Lewis. We definitely did get the list of sit of streets. Um, it came a little bit after the 22 bond election, but I promise it was sent to TPW staff for evaluating it for the next bond election, which I think is 2026. We sent it well uh, my name is Julius White. I'm the uh, Senior Capital Projects Officer for Transportation Management, and I manage the street lights and traffic signals and signs. Uh, I heard you mention that you guys have done something in the community with the lights. 
Uh, if you want to come talk to me afterwards, and when we finish up, I can try to work with you to see about what's the issue that's going on over there. Yeah, I don't want to throw you under the bus, but the problem is it's the <laughs> same problem we've been having yeah. for years. We got it, Johnny. Okay. We got it. All right. Um, if you do have uh, lists of streets, and I, I don't know if y'all can talk real quick, because there's two different types of uh, repairs that we do. If you, uh, so I'm Mary Hanna with the Transportation Public Work Capital Delivery. So if you have a street, depend on the type of, like what type of repair. If it's something we can do it with maintenance, with every year maintenance budget, we can do it. But if it's beyond maintenance, the way you're describing it, it seems like it's beyond maintenance. So it's need complete reconstruction. That will need to be put in the bond. So we are actually working, we just started working now to prepare for the 2026. So it takes us a long time to get the list. So if you get us 20, late 2021 or early 22, it was too late for us to include it in the 2022 bond. We are working now for 2026. So come talk to us uh, and give me the list. We are actually working on that right now. Do we have a, hold on, do we have a deadline for uh, that those streets should be... For 2026? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we still have a year, a year and a half to compile all the lists before it goes to like the council approval and then we'll go to the public meeting and then well, like in 2026, May 2026, we'll beat the board. So we still have a year and a half working on this list. Okay. And, but as we, when we talk about like potholes and stuff, that, that goes on the pay, pay go. Yeah, if it's something small, we can see if it mm -hmm. can be repaired or maybe filled up, go and repair. If you take a picture, if there is a bus hole, if you put a picture with the app, they will repair it in 24, 48 hour max. Okay. Yeah, if it's only a bus hole. Okay, we have to stop so we can make sure we get out on time. Uh, but again, I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you uh, for your question. Your questions don't stop today. Please continue. And again, um, there's trend, people, just like any other business, employees come, employees leave, people have emails, people delete emails. If you send stuff, resend that stuff back to us. So keep us on our P's and Q's that, hey, I sent this on this day, I'm returning it, another email to make sure you get it so that we all can be um, coherent together. So uh, thank all of our city staff for coming out. Uh, thank you. And so we act, and Southside Community Garden has made it. So please visit her table. Well, I'm telling people to come visit your table. I'll go visit uh, Trish, y'all. All right, uh, this ain't church, so there's no benediction. You guys are dismissed. Thank y'all for coming out tonight.